Hi, I'm Alan Boyd, Research Finance Manager for GuideStar Clinical Trials Management. We get a number of questions about how to effectively prepare for a successful FDA audit. So we thought it would be helpful to put together a brief educational webinar for those looking for guidance in this area. During this webinar, we'll take some time to talk about the purpose of an FDA audit, the types of FDA audits, and what might trigger an audit. Next, we'll cover how a typical inspection is conducted and what some of the common findings are. Finally, we will discuss the best next steps to take after the audit based on the FDA findings. Let's start by talking a little bit about why the FDA audits sites in the first place. First and foremost, the agency's responsibility is to ensure the rights, safety, and welfare of research subjects are protected. Though subject protection is priority number one, auditing also guarantees regulatory compliance, process validation, and accurate study data submission. The FDA Office of Regulatory Affairs performs inspections of sponsors and monitors activities and investigators at research sites. Research activities under new drug applications, investigational new drugs, and investigational devices are all subject to FDA auditing and special care should be taken to follow the set guidelines. To help with compliance, the office provides program manuals specific to IRBs, clinical investigators, and sponsors. All of these are great references to better ensure that your program maintains compliance. The goal of an audit is to review, inspect, and verify how your site is conducting a clinical trial. The FDA auditor will evaluate the ethical conduct of human subject research, and integrity of previously reported data, adherence to the study protocol, applicable institutional, state, and federal regulations, and guidance documents will also be evaluated. There are two types of audits, routine audits and for-cause audits. Routine audits are done randomly on research sites as a checkup on the operations. The for-cause audits are exactly what they sound like. The FDA has a reason to check in on a research site. Let's investigate what some of those reasons may be. A complaint can come from any source, whether it be a study participant, someone on the research staff, or an anonymous source. Regardless of the source, if the FDA hears any rumbling of an issue, it is going to check it out. In the same vein, if a sponsor or the IRB shares a concern about a research site with the FDA, a for-cause audit will occur. Any of these triggers may be related to screening practices, protocol adherence, or anything in between. An audit may also occur if the FDA receives word that the site has had multiple deviations from the protocol, unusual adverse events, or if it has recently been terminated by another sponsor or IRB. Lastly, the FDA may have identified a special interest in the research site and conduct an audit to investigate that further. Clearly, there are several reasons the FDA may choose to audit a research site. So what happens if the FDA comes knocking on your door soon? Upon arrival, the inspector will show his or her FDA credentials and notice of inspection, also known as FDA Form 482. All of these steps give the FDA the authority to access, inspect, and copy any records related to the clinical investigation. He or she will likely speak with individuals involved in conducting the trial. This extensive and likely unplanned audit process is part of why GuideStar considers it a best practice to regularly train the research staff on FDA audit procedure. The FDA inspector will be looking at a number of areas during the audit such as was the protocol followed, were SOPs followed, what were the qualifications of the study personnel, is specific documentation of informed consent present, they reviewed documents such as IRB approval of the protocol, informed consent form, and amendments. They will determine if adverse events were documented and reported appropriately, were deviations documented and reported appropriately, how did the clinical investigator delegate and supervise study tasks, was appropriate accountability of investigational product maintained, and they will also review any financial interest reported by the clinical investigator. Once an audit is complete, the inspectors typically hold an exit interview that provides the site with a highlight of audit findings and outcomes. If everything is in order and no deficiencies are found, a letter of observed basic compliance will be issued. 
If deficiencies are found, the inspector will issue a 483 containing detailed inspectional observations. This pre-warning notification allows the site 15 business days to respond to the deficiencies. Following that response, the FDA will provide an informational letter for deviations under the threshold of significance. If there are significant violations, a warning letter will be issued to the site. Some common findings as a result of an FDA inspection are things such as non-adherence to protocol, inadequate or inaccurate records, failure to report adverse events, problems with informed consent process, issues with IRB approvals. Having the right foundation is key in a successful FDA audit. It is critical that the right people are on the right seats of the bus. Qualified, experienced, and well-trained personnel are a key foundational element. Beyond personnel, the facility also needs to be capable of performing the trial. SOPs written by personnel who know and perform the processes must be in place and follow to a T. As I mentioned earlier, a specific FDA preparedness SOP to include a mock audit routine and in an internal training program goes a long way in setting the right foundation for successful audit outcomes. Even after all of this information, FDA audits may still seem incredibly daunting, so we have listed some great resources for further reading here. The FDA has a comprehensive FDA compliance program manual, as well as a guide for FDA inspections. These resources will provide you with great detail as you prepare your organization's FDA-ready SOP or to prepare for an actual FDA audit. This concludes the webinar on preparing for an FDA audit. I hope you found this information helpful and that in the event of an actual FDA audit that it will help you best prepare for the most successful outcome possible. Thank you. GuideStar works with hospitals, health systems, and physician practices around the country to build, manage, and support clinical research programs. From helping incorporate a clinical trial strategy to providing management guidance and support, our service delivery is based on operational and financial best practices to ensure optimal results for research programs.